All right, let's talk about implicit processes and um, just as a sort of a, a intro to, to modeling. Now, when you think of implicit, you may think of its opposite, which is explicit. So implicit, implicit is something that is sort of hidden or latent, whereas, um, you know, explicit is something that's sort of in your face and deliberate, right? So it's, it may be sort of confusing at first to think about what is something like an implicit process? If it's not defined, uh, how do you know it's even a process? So one example of this is, um, I like to think of some, something like the Neanderthal burial ritual. Um, and I'll just bring that up right here. So this is a from the National Geographic, and it's uh, it says the title is Neanderthal burials confirmed as ancient ritual. Now, ritual is a kind of process. You perform rituals in many different circumstances, um, from from family rituals to individual collective rituals to uh, uh, religious rituals and so forth. So. What you've got here is you've got people that have, have unearthed the site right here of an individual and based on the position and the condition you can kind of implicitly argue that there was a lot of care involved in this process. It wasn't like somebody just randomly um, thrown around when, when they die. Uh, there was a lot of care and in a certain approach. And, you know, you probably have seen other kinds of burials like this where, you know, you they're adorned with jewelry and other artifacts and so forth. And so it's kind of implicit that there's a process going on, there's a ritual going on, or that went on um, 50,000 years ago, even though the evidence that we have, the immediate evidence, is simply the digging. Now, one of the reasons why we can jump to this conclusion of process based on a skeleton uh, is that we can look at our own culture and how we treat people, um, you know, the, the die and the, the, the religious rituals that go on and so on. We can kind of go back, uh, go, go to native uh, populations and you know, study what they do, and we can infer that the idea that there was a process here, even though the process is really not explicitly defined, it's implicitly defined. I'll just drag this down here. Okay, we're also going to cover uh, natural language here in terms of implicit process. This is not really implicit, but this is based on, on, on the idea that natural language is a kind of modeling. So in conjunction with drawing, um, you know, natural language is a natural way to describe processes. We grow up, we learn a language. Uh, the language I'm using is English but there are thousands of languages and uh, you know we go back in time we find things like the code of Hammurabi which is no question that there's a, an encoding of process and it's encoding a process in the form of rules so they were models uh, models actually for how one should behave in a you know kind of civilized society, recipes are, are good examples of of models of process. Uh, you know, just pick pick up your favorite. You go online, or if you've got a book, a recipe book, pick it out. Study how process is is represented. So that is that that those are models of um, how one behaves 
in order to cook, in order to create something. Uh, federal and state legislative statutes are all written. So there's tons of processes lurking inside of anything that's created by the government uh, in terms of law, making law, making codes. Uh, and patents uh, are a really interesting case of where language is used you, you know, for, for modeling how something works. So this is, these are just some examples of, of natural language as model. Uh, this is from Macbeth, uh, Act 1, Scene 3. And if you go through here, fixate on the verbs because the verbs will lead you um, naturally to thinking about process modeling. But the key is when you read this, you form something in your mind, you imagine, the imagination takes hold, and you are kind of building an artificial construction. Um, you, know, you know, of course you could, you could draw this, you could paint it, uh, you, you could even make music from it, but, uh, but you know, just an, an example from, from Shakespeare. Uh, and this is from the Code of Hammurabi, which I mentioned. If a man destroy the eye of another man, they shall destroy his eye, and, and so on. And so there are these rule if-then rules, which, you know, you think to, to computer programming, there are lots of if-then statements, right? If-then, and then maybe an else. Well. Code of Hammurabi is full of this kind of thing, right? But it's not expressed formally in a particular language or a particular code, programming language. It's, it's just in natural language. This is a, um, an American cookbook from 1796. And if you look online, you can actually find a lot of old recipes. Here's a recipe for a sea pie. Again, Look for the verbs. Four pound of flour, one and a half pound of butter, rolled, past tense, roll, right, into a paste, wet with cold water, line. That's a verb, it's an action. So this is a model, this, this, this English paragraph is a model for making a sea pie. Now patents are, are interesting for many reasons. One is that if you were looking for something in English or uh, any, any natural language that is really detailed, you're going to find it in patent language because typically most patents don't include things like flowcharts or other kinds of process models. They use natural language to describe the process. And in doing so, they describe with a great amount of precision and detail um, a process. So it's, it's the most, I, I guess apart from, from law, well, distinct from law, patent law and, and the idea of patent applications and patent content um, is a great way of finding out, gee, how, how far can you go with natural language defining a process? There's, a, there's just a picture, and there are often pictures which are iconic of the thing to be modeled. There aren't that many flowcharts. I have found a few in some patents, but in, in most patents that I've seen, um, they use English to, uh, to define the process. This is just a summary. Natural language is, along with playing with toys and, and maybe making them, it, it's sort of foundational in, in, mod, in process modeling.